I'm about to head back out into the lobby when my phone begins to vibrate. Incoming call, Jacob Strain. I laugh as I answer, relieved he's alive, that he's calling. Are you okay? For a moment, there's only dead air and I freeze, my eyes fixed on the window that looks out on Monument Square, the autumn farmer's market and food trucks. It's the beginning of October, full-blown fall, the time when everything in Portland appears straight out of an L.L. Bean catalog. Pumpkins and gourds, jugs of apple cider. A woman in plaid flannel and duck boots crosses the square, smiling down at the baby strapped to her chest. Strain? He exhales a heavy sigh. I guess you saw. Yeah, I say, I saw. I don't ask questions, but he launches into an explanation anyway. He says the school is opening an investigation, and he's bracing himself for the worst. He assumes they'll force him to resign. He doubts he'll make it through the school year, maybe not even to Christmas break. Hearing his voice is such a shock that I struggle to keep up with what he says. It's been months since we last spoke. When I was gripped with panic after my dad died of a heart attack, and I told Strain I couldn't do it anymore. The same sudden onset of morals I've had through years of screw-ups, lost jobs, breakups, and breakdowns, as though being good could retroactively fix all the things I've broken. But they already investigated back when she was your student, I say. They're revisiting it. Everyone's getting interviewed all over again. If they decided you didn't do anything wrong back then, why would they change their minds now? Paid any attention to the news lately, he asks. We're living in a different time. I want to tell him he's being overdramatic, that it'll be okay so long as he's innocent, but I know he's right. For the past month, something's been gaining momentum, a wave of women outing men as harassers, assaulters. It's mostly celebrities who have been targeted, Musicians, politicians, movie stars. But less famous men have been named, too. No matter their background, the accused go through the same steps. First, they deny everything. Then, as it becomes clear the din of accusations isn't going away, they resign from their jobs in disgrace and issue a statement of vague apology that stops short of admitting wrongdoing. Then the final step... They go silent and disappear. It's been surreal to watch it play out day after day, these men falling so easily. It should be okay, I say. Everything she wrote is a lie. On the phone, Strain sucks in a breath, air whistling through his teeth. I don't know if she is lying, at least not technically. But you barely touched her. In that post, she says you assaulted her. Assault, he scoffs. Assault can be anything. Like how battery can mean you grabbed someone by the wrist or shoved their shoulder. It's a meaningless legal term. I stare out the window at the farmer's market, the milling crowd, the swarming seagulls. A woman selling food opens a metal tub, releasing a cloud of steam as she pulls out two tamales. You know, she messaged me last week. A beat of silence. Did she? She wanted to see if I'd come forward, too. Probably figured she'd be more believable if she roped me into it. Strain says nothing. I didn't respond, obviously. Right, he says. Of course. I thought she was bluffing. Didn't think she'd have the nerve. I lean forward, press my forehead against the window. It'll be okay. You know where I stand. And with that, he breathes out. I can imagine the smile of relief on his face, 
the creases in the corners of his eyes. That's all I need to hear, he says. <laughs>